Practice time. Hopefully you know how this works. You are going to work through the video with me or ahead of me. Best thing to do would be to pause it right now and solve these two triangles and then watch through my solution. See if you do it the same way. You should be mimicking my style. You should be thinking the same things. Don't just go through this and do it without using your brain. Thinking about what you're doing all the time makes you better at math. Ready? Game on. Okay, so how do we start these things? You're going to label from the 48 degrees, so from this angle, that is the opposite, which makes this the hypotenuse. Well, it's hypotenuse anyways, but this is the adjacent side. Okay, so I'm looking for A and H. I hope you can still read that that was 12.4. So A and H, go up here, find A and H, bam, it is cos. So write out the equation, and I'm gonna sub in as I write out the equation. So the cos of the angle, which is the cos of 48 degrees is equal to A over H, which in this case is 12.4 over X. Okay, X is on the bottom. So how do I get X out from the bottom? Well, I multiply both sides by X. So I'm going to get X cos 48 degrees equals 12.4. So if you didn't see that, it's because I'm doing this. So I multiply both sides by this x. And then the x and x cancel out. So now x isn't on the bottom anymore. Now x is up here. Now what do I have to do? Now I have to divide by the cos of 48 degrees. So this ends up over the cos of 48 degrees. So this cancels out. And I end up that x is equal to this over this. Now take it to your calculator, 12.4 divided by 48 cos is how these calculators work. Your calculator might work a little bit different, hit equals, and I get 18.5. All right, done. Next one, fire it up. 52x, so this is zero, this is Sorry, this is O, this is A, this is H. Now, once you get the hang of this, you can start to fill it in a little bit faster. If you're still slow, start with O, then do H, then do A. Uh, o and A, O and A, O and A, O and A, there's O and A. O and A tells me to use tan, so I'm gonna use the tan of the angle this time. The angle is 52 degrees and that equals x over 15. Good, x is on top, it makes it easier that way. This time, I take both sides and I multiply by 15, so I get 15, 10, 52. Now remember, this isn't just magic, I'm solving. So, cross these, multiply by 15. 15 divided by 15 cancels out, it goes to one. This side gets multiplied by 15, and I just put the 15 in front. Okay, so punch this one. 15 timesing this time. I always multiply when the x was on the top. So times 52, 10 equals equals 19.2. Hopefully you can tell that's a nine, right? Uh, let's clean it up a bit. Okay, perfect. Ready? You thought you were done? You haven't even solved for an angle yet. So. I'm going to open up a new window with new questions. Okay, ready, same deal. O, H, A, A and H this time. You've already done this, you're right. Well, you're gonna do it a lot more. You've got cos, okay, cos this time. So cos of theta, the angle, what's the angle? Oh man, I don't have an angle. So I just write cos of theta. Why am I doing this? Well, because I'm solving for the angle this time. It happens. So four over 6.8, not 68. That would give you a very different answer. Now, how do you solve for an angle? Well, I do the inverse. So theta is equal to the cos negative one. So find that inverse button of four over 6.8. Now. I'm just gonna show this step because some of you are gonna be punched into your calculator this way. You don't have to show this step. But this, four divided by 6.8 goes to something like 0 0.5882, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna round it right there. Now, 
this is what's going on. I'm dividing this and then I'm taking the cos inverse of this decimal. Now, the, what, the reason why I don't really want you to show that even is because it's better to just keep it in your calculator. Because right now in your calculator, it's keeping all of those decimal places. So when you hit inverse or shift or second cos, then you get a better answer. So you get 53.968. Oh, well, what happens to 968? Well, 9 rounds up to 0, which changes this to a 4. So rounding this properly, it goes to 54.0 degrees, because the 9 got rounded up. And there's my answer. So this step, remember, this is optional step there, but I was just showing you what actually goes on. I divide it and then take the cos inverse. But instead of actually rounding, you keep it in your calculator when you hit second cos. Ready for the next one? OK. O. H. A. So O and A tells us, oh my gosh, I'm using tan again. Are you never going to use sine or sine? Oh man, stop talking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm messing myself up there. Am I never going to use sine? Right, I'm never going to use sine because I'm using tan this time. That's what I'm doing. So tan. Okay, so just in case you got lost there with my random babble, why am I using tan? Because I've labeled with O and A, and tan uses O and A. Sine uses O and H, and I don't have an H in this case. Remember never to use the angle as a side. That's an angle. Don't try to use that as H or A or O. That wouldn't make any sense. So tan of 30 degrees, right? The angle always goes in there, is equal to O over A, which is 4 over X. OK, X is on the bottom. Now, what happens when X is on the bottom? Well, I'll show you quickly. What happens is X is equal to 4 over tan 30. Now. Once you start practicing a lot, this is going to start to make sense. You can just go to this step. But until you've practiced a lot, keep using your brain. Think about what you're actually doing. You're multiplying both sides by x. The x comes up over here. These cancel out. And then I multiply both sides by the tan of 30. This is proper solving. So you're getting things to cancel out to zeros or ones. Well, ones in this case, because I'm dividing out. So these divide out to 1, and then it ends up over here. So you end up with? 4 over tan 30. And that happens every single time. You're going to be dividing by the sine, cos, or tan. OK, so once again, punching this in my calculator, 4 divided by 30 tan equals. And I'm glad I'm using this crappy calculator on the computer, because um, this is the calculator that is harder to work, the one that makes you hit sine, cos, or tan second. The calculators that you can just punch this in is 4 divided by tan 30. They're easy to work. Hopefully you've got one of those. Good for that. Two more. Uh, where are we here in C? Open it up and let's go. So speed through these things from the angle. Labeling O, labeling H, labeling A. So what are we using this time? Oh, well, you think we might be using sine because I haven't done it yet, but we're not. It's still cos. It's A and H. OK, so cos of 40. Let's squeeze a 5 in there. 54 degrees equals x over 87. So I multiply both sides by 87. The 87 comes up here, and I get 87 cos 54 degrees equals x. And then I punch that through. So 87 times 54 cos equals x is equal to 51.1. You get the same thing? I hope so. And I hope you are working ahead and not just watching me do it, because you don't learn crap by just watching. You learn by doing. So if you haven't done so already, pause the video, work ahead, get your answer, and then check after to see if you got the same answer as me. Oh, perfect. OK, here is a sign. Finally, there's an O and an H, which tells me to use sine. Sine of what? Well, the angle, because I don't have it. I'm solving for it, is equal to 7 over 14. All right. Now, how do I solve this? I do theta is equal to the sine inverse. So whenever I take sine off of its angle, whenever I take sine off of theta, I'm always doing an inverse. 
So I'm doing the inverse of the other side to solve for theta. So again, remembering from the last problem, well, two problems ago, you take seven divided by 14, and then you hit inverse sine. Ooh, this is one of our special angles. Notice that I didn't get an ugly decimal. It goes exactly 230 degrees. Sweet. Well, we'll have a video about those special ones. Hope you got those right. If you didn't get them right, maybe you should try them again.